want to welcome everybody to our next series of a 30 minute series of spotlight of one of our star agents that we have in the market center. Today is a great day because we have none other than the man himself, right? The real estate champion. Matter of fact, I feel like I need to do a WWE <laughs> intro, you know, we can get a belt. you know, grab the belt, have him come in, you know, kick down the door, walk in and he shows him as a champion for his business and a champion for his health. So none other than Steven Pivich himself from SP Home Team. Um, well, Steve, tell me a little bit about you and tell me a little bit about your business. Okay. So I got into the business in 2015. Um, I sold my first house in 20, in March, 2015. Uh, that year, um, I was a part-time agent. Am I looking at the camera here? Part-time agent, uh, about 25 deals at maybe four and a half million. Uh, 2016, kind of picked up some speed, sold maybe 40 homes as a single agent, part-time still. Uh, maybe about six and a half million, seven million. And then in 2017, I decided to go full time midway through in June and sold personally with no assistant until then. Uh, for that year, 90 homes at 17 million, a lot of work. Uh, part time, which I did have an office, so it wasn't like I was like driving an Amazon truck or, or at a supermarket. So I had some time to kind of work in the business. Um, <clears throat> decided to go full-time in June of 2017 when I made my salary in one month in February of 2017. I was like, all right, well, this is real money and now I can jump and I'm okay. I felt comfortable. Um, in the end of 2017, October, I hired my first assistant, um, had her for three and a half years, uh, 2018, got my first agent. So it was my assistant and one other agent and collectively we did about 120 homes. Um, I was about 100 of those at 18 million, which I thought was my ceiling, but there's no way I can do more than 100 homes in a year, no more than 18 million in a year. That was just a limited belief. Um, 2019, I sold 125 homes at 25 million. 2020, uh, this is all personal production. Uh, 2020, um, sold 135 homes at, I think, 28 million. And this year, I'm on target for 150 homes at 40 million. Wow. Yeah. And then, so as a team, talk about that a little bit yeah. too. Okay. So, as a team, uh, that was all individual production because I'm still in the business. I enjoy messy plate. I enjoy uh, working with people, which is why I'm in the business, right? It, the intention wasn't to build a team, it just all happened organically. Uh, just by having friends and like-minded people that wanted to sort of do this together and sharing resources, right? Sharing admin support, sharing marketing, sharing a space, sharing a vision, sharing big goals. So as a team uh, this year, we are made up of uh, 12 sales agents, five support staff from transaction coordinators, uh, operations manager, ISA department, virtual assistant, um, and we're on target for about 110 million in about 360 units. Wow, man, that's phenomenal. And just hearing that trajectory from dual career agent to now, we have 12 sales agents on the team, five admins, and the growth that you have is, is astonishing. Um, let's kind of walk through that career a little bit. So you started off as a dual career agent. Yep. What got you into real estate? What, what made you decide to get your license and start? 2014, I, I was bored. I was bored of my job and said, I need something else, right? I've always been a person where I've had a messy plate, a lot of things going on. And if I get still, I get anxious, mm -hmm. right? So I, I, this is when flip this house, whatever else is on TV. Okay, let me look into this, right? Uh, looked into it, um, got my license, realized that probably didn't have the capital or resources or knowledge of how to flip a house. My brother and I, uh, we just, we weren't there yet, right? So uh, he didn't have a college degree. I did. He was like, listen, I can't leave my job. He's like, why don't you go for it? Okay. So I got my license, uh, started marketing to my sphere in all 2014 um, and just learning the business. I was a student who was taking classes at my brokerage twice a week from five to seven, so left my nine to five, went straight from there to, to his office uh, twice a week, read books, watch videos, study people. Um, I wanted to, my mindset was, if I'm gonna go help Savage buy a home, I need to know what I'm doing, right? Because if I go out and I misrepresent him, he says, this guy dropped the ball, I lost my deposit, I'm now in a lawsuit, 
guess what? I'm probably not going to earn his business back and probably not going to earn any referrals from him. Uh, and I'm all about reputation. Uh, I, I think that I have service all my clients. There's a reason why as a team, we have 300 reviews and, and all five stars, not, not one four star review. So we're pretty prideful in that. Um, so going back 2014 is when I, I got my license and then really was just like testing the waters. Had nobody else in my sphere that was in the space. Um, there was no real competition, right? In this market, it, the industry, I looked at it, it was competition in the beginning. Like it's me versus the other agent on the other side, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's not at all. It's enough business for us to go around. I mean, people in this office, a lot of production and, and I have never done a deal with like Matt Ryan group. I've never, and they're a big team. Like there's a lot of business to go around. So um, yeah, and then 2015 kind of just started advertising myself. I sent out magnets twice a, twice a year, right? Orioles and Ravens. I'm on people's count fridges for 10, 11 months out of the year. Some friends, I'm on there for four years, right? They still have my face, <laughs> a, a progression of, of every year. Um, and uh, it's just a way for me to stay front of mind. In, in those magnets, I sent out a letter as well says, hey, this is where the market is. This is where rates are, 30 year, 15 year. If you're a buyer, this is what you need to know, right? There's grant programs available. You can, you know, if you're a VA buyer, X, Y, and Z, if you're a seller. And let me dig into things. that because you, you said a few things that really should hone in on. You were a student of the game, essentially. And that's where you got the knowledge to be able to go out and represent your clients. Yeah. But you also said you didn't have a lot of capital. Right, and you didn't have a lot to go there. But what was your production your first year? First year in 2015, mm -hmm. uh, 26 units, five million. 26 units, five million. Right. Mm -hmm. So essentially, for the KW world, you're getting 100 percent of your commission. You're running off. You're having a successful career in the very beginning yeah. with limited capital. But all you had was the resources of going into the market center and learning. Wow. What were some of the key things that you grasped onto to say that this is how I was able to get to the five million volume that I did? Yeah, yeah. And, and the model, I was at a different brokerage, smaller boutique brokerage. The splits weren't that attractive, right? I was paying a lot of money to the company. And there was no internet marketing. Like I'm gonna mm -hmm. spend money on Zillow, spend money through different resources. It was strictly sphere driven, setting out mailers. Um, so reaching out to my database, reaching out to my brother and his database mother to reach out to her database to get all these addresses right once i had these sent out a handwritten note card to each person uh whether i knew them or not if i didn't know them some sort of you know personal note joke memory whatever it may be uh and then circle them back with it hey did you get my letter i sent in the mail i, I want to send out a piece of value to you uh, a few times a year would you be open to you know getting that sure of course and, uh, and that's was, that was the touch, right? Getting that approval, getting that okay. Uh, I have the phone number now. And then just, just loading a database, which is all on a spreadsheet for, for two years. Hmm. And in 2017 is when I first started using a CRM, uh, started using top producer at that point. Okay. Yeah. So literally bare bones, spreadsheet, just grinding and like you said, a messy plate and working yeah. through it. I still operate that way in some way. <laughs> it's all right, hey, but you built something that's magical. So it, it obviously is working for you. But let's walk through. So let's, we have production. We're now going through trainings. We're learning different things. Mm -hmm. You had a spark, something triggered to just have your production just ramp up and get to a point where now this is taking off to now you're making the same amount of money in one month that you're making with your regular salary. Wow. What happened? What was that transition? Mm -hmm. So I think that for me to get to the point business-wise, uh, I think it was all validity, right? Credibility in the beginning. You're not going to get business from people. You're first year in the business. You're not going to get somebody saying, "Hey, listen, you may. I'm going to sell my house. You know, my five hundred thousand dollar largest asset that I own because you're a friend of mine. You know the business. It's going to take some time for you to gain reviews, some some comfort from them. Um, so that took, I guess, probably two years. Mm -hmm. Did and, and you know, most agents don't make it the first twelve months of the business. They got to commit to it. It's a long game, in some way. Um, it's a marathon. So I don't know the exact like point of like, okay, in March, 2017, like what, like, what did I do to, to really get the ground running? I think it was just time um, and just pouring back into to my business. Like I am a very much student of the, the game itself and the industry in knowledge of, I mean, I transactions that I've done, I don't know what the total number is, but the past five years, 
it's over, uh, I don't know, 400 and some odd units, mm -hmm. 150 units. So I've been through every transaction. I've been through every scenario, every conversation, buyer and seller, other agent, inspector, appraiser. Um, and I think that just when I meet somebody, they can see that I care. They can see that I know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not a salesperson by nature. I think I'm just more of like a relationship person and, and a connector. Mm. And then just show them like, okay, this guy isn't here to sell me some snake oil. He's here to actually show me what I should do as a consultant, right? It's more of a consult consultation that we do in this business, not sales side. Mm. You know, you said something, and I almost think that you're being humble when you say it, but it goes back to what you mentioned before. And I know you outside of this and had different conversations that being a student of the game and you learning as you're going through these transactions, you just mentioned you've done each transaction, you pick something up from it. But then you also said that you build the relationships, right? Mm -hmm. And what's the marketing piece? You send something that's a personal note, you connect with them. Mm -hmm. So as you've grown, how are you, and, and now with the team, mm -hmm. how do you still use that philosophy of that individual touch point, that building relationship? How do you cultivate that as you've gotten larger? And now it's harder to have that individual conversation with everyone. Yeah, it is. And we're still building that out, right? So it's, um, as you do more business, it's just very tough to reach out to every person individually. Uh, and our business is 90% sphere repeat business. We know that we need to probably get outside sources, internet leads for sale by owners. Like we need to get these to scale, right? Because there's only so many people in our sphere. We need to find other spheres. And that in some ways, um, other lead sources will allow you to get into different people's worlds. Like my natural sphere in Eastern Baltimore County, Eastern Baltimore City, you know, the price point's not four or $500,000, right? Where I grew up, the average price point's probably 150, is what it is. And for me to get into Northern Baltimore County, Western Baltimore County, Carroll County, Howard County, I needed to meet more people, right? And so in every, I try to network with as many people as possible, which in some way, you know, I just, I'm, I say yes, I'm a yes person, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I have a slight FOMO and, and I, whenever I can go somewhere, I want to go somewhere. I'm going somewhere this Thursday to the GBBR event in, in Martins West, mm -hmm. just because I was invited. Yes, I'm coming, you know? Do I have a full schedule? Yeah, I do, but I'm coming to network and to hang out. Uh, so within our team, we're still doing magnets twice a year. Uh, we're doing some drip campaigns to the CRM. We're doing some some recent videos to our database, uh, just kind of popping in and saying hello. Uh, we, full disclosure, we haven't had a client appreciation event yet. We're doing one, our first one uh, in 2022, scheduling that. Because um, it's all just been us running and hustling and just doing good business. Um, and then now structuring around that, right? So we have a lot of people that come from different backgrounds, different part-time agents, uh, and how we can point their people because there's only so much time they have, yeah. right? So how we can do it using technology, using our support team um, and collectively, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're looking to grow big things and to do that, we need more people. And uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's, you mentioned network and, and I think you network phenomenally. I think the way that you network, it pulls people in. I mean, just the way that your team has grown, it's grown organically for people who've been involved with you and who have just met you a few times said, oh, this is somebody I definitely need to connect with and more with. Yeah. Um, that seems to be something that you've also used in your business to cultivate new leads to come in and new people to grow mm -hmm. and continue to develop that way. I think that's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, I wanted to ask you about things that you really love in this business, right? Um, you love people you know connecting, but as we get into the nitty gritty of the day to day, what is something that you truly enjoy about the process that you go through on a regular basis working with a client that separates you from other agents? Gotcha. Okay. So in a transaction, um, I would say showing that I, that I care again, and I know what I'm doing and showing where this came from. So specifically, um, my prior brokerage, he pounded your head, like if you're going to go to a listing appointment, your value is pricing, like your pricing strategy is how you should do this. We now know that that probably isn't the reason why most people use you, right? They use you because you're a likable person, you're relatable, they wanna work with you for that reason, right? Uh, pricing is like 7% of why they wanna work with you, right? But for me, it was all showing the value and how much I care and how much I, um, like I actually am I'm gonna 
worth for getting this. So for me, uh, doing a market analysis was the one selling point that when I went to a listing, that's why you should use me, was I'm gonna show you how I can price your home effectively, why we're gonna price it this way. And honestly, the work that I did, and we can show that, yeah, I sent you an email yep. uh, to kind of pull it up. The work that I did when I went to an appointment and the conversation was, I always did it in two appointments. The first one was to build a floor and to also get to know their home, um, which is time consuming, uh, to have a second appointment come back because we know we're just trying to get the next deal in some way, uh, but to come back and say, this is where I think that I should, you should price your home. Uh, and a lot of times they will wait for me to come back for the second appointment because they wanna know what I had to say, right? Most agents, when they come into a home and we do, you know, we look around, we have a general idea of what comps are, we have some comps in front of us that we pulled, you know, based on what I see, I think your home's worth about 325, right? And we just say it on the fly in some way because maybe we have some idea on prior conversations like the condition, the updates they've done, the layout, but when you're there, you're kind of just like, what do you think the value is? You know, I'm like, this is where I think it is. But when I come back for a second appointment and justify where I came from, and like, this is the work that I've done before getting your business. Imagine what I'll do when I, when I have your business. Well, let's let you shine for a bit. So I'm gonna share a screen and this is going to go through your presentation that you actually set up that you go through with your clients. Yeah. So is it on this TV for the audience? It's going to be. Okay. Yeah, so these are friends of mine. This is back in, let's see, 20. 2017. Okay. So this is the email I just forwarded to Brandon, January 2017. Uh, an email, just sort of a few comps where I uh, I thought value wise where we would be, but just to kind of show you the actual uh, presentation. Again, this is uh, 2017 prior to me joining uh, KW. Or actually, I would probably just join, but still use his probably uh, presentation. Uh, it was a market appraisal. How you define market value. Um, and this is a lot of what I've never actually used the bright CMA or any other CMA. This has always been a lot of when I kind of go off of. I include the deed, deed of trust, different recorded documents, uh, different homes that were sold in their area. This happens to be on South Clinton Street in Canton. Sort of all these recent solds, um, ones under contract. Again, just having this three comparable properties that I use to justify value that were most comparable. Um, and and you're going through this on the second appointment that you made with them? This is the second appointment. Yeah, okay. first appointment, again, is just building rapport. Uh, it is getting to know their home, what updates, renovations they did. Can I ask a question? Sure. If someone, if a seller asks you in that first appointment, what do you think my home is worth? How do you respond to that question? Yeah, yeah. so I have, no a general, general yeah, correct. I have a general idea, but I don't want to give you a number now because what I'm going to tell you, you're probably going to hold me to. So I'd love to come back and show you where I came from to justify uh, how I came up with that. Is that fair to say? That's pretty much what I did, yeah. yeah. So, and a lot of times they will wait for me to come back. Right. When I tell them I have a very detailed and thorough process, they want to they're going to wait for me. Yeah. yeah. They may not choose me, you know, but most cases, you know, most of my business is fear, uh, but the cold leads that I've had go on, they wait for me. They should, oh, they, I, my success rate is pretty high, um, I guess, for that reason. So this is the, the CMA itself, which is nothing special, but specifically what I want to show you is, um, this is the actual like CMA that I do, right? So most of us will do on a sheet of paper, uh, style of home, bedroom size, or bedroom count, bathroom count, square footage, basement, yes or no, updates, adjustments, right? So like I'm down to like the age of the furnace, age of the water heater, uh, storm door, yes or no, age of the dishwasher. And so I'm making adjustments for all of these. These are all subjective, right? But in most cases, like, okay, if you have a house and they're similar and one's a brand new dishwasher, one's a seven year dishwasher, I might make a 300 hour adjustment. It's all subjective. Like, is that really that detailed that necessary? It's not, but like when you show them this is the work that I'm doing like before you even get your business. Okay, this guy's gonna work, right? I know that if I give this guy a three three percent commission, two and a half percent commission, this guy is not gonna just get pictures taken, put a sign in the yard, and just like just let it sit. You know, 
that was my value proposition then. I still use it now to this day, not as detailed because I'm just too damn busy to do all this stuff. But I mean, I get down to like, you know, so when I have three properties and if I have 325, 325, 373, price per square foot, the average four comps, what I tell them is sometimes like the price you sell it at is typically between the low and the middle and the price that we should list that as the high, right? I forget what I listed this at, maybe 350. Um, we sold it quick and sold it for the value that it uh, should have sold for. Um, and if I have like three comps that are all over the place, I'll use, you know, four, five, and six. And I came up with 347 to here. So let me ask you, uh, uh, there's a lot that I see in this. And I'd be happy to share this too. You do guys. you still, and you say you still we use stole it. <laughs> and you say you still use a, a variance of this, just not as detailed. Are you still handwriting this information in yeah. or have you automated it? So my, I'll do this handwritten at home uh, with like three comps, four comps. It takes me instead of this, this would take me a few hours to do. Right? It's just a lot of just data you have to write down. Mm -hmm. Now it takes me probably 20, 30 minutes to do one, uh, depending on the property. If it's a townhome in Dundalk, I'm gonna do it 10 minutes. Right? If it's a single family in Worthington Valley, it might take me 35 minutes, mm. right? So it just depends. Um, and I wanna, when I go to them, I wanna kind of where I came from value-wise, I came up with this, because they're asking me questions, right? right? And most times tenants challenge me. And, and I, for some appointments, I may just put plus or minus for number one, two, and three instead of the actual number. Because if I say this home here has a $10,000 superior adjustment comparison to yours because of landscaping, they're gonna say, like, you don't like our arborvitaes or you know, like, get out of our house. You know, like, so I have sometimes just know the client, I may not put specific numbers, but if they're a C on the disc, like they want to know. So I'll be, um, I'll be pretty detailed with that. Just depending what kind of client it is. So do, 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 so do you have each one of your agents essentially do this with theirs? Or? No, so I'm, I'm teaching a class to them tomorrow on this too. We've done a, one a year ago. We're like, how I do mine. And how I do mine isn't right, right? It's just how I do mine. Uh, everybody's can, you can probably compress this down uh, in a lot shorter time than I did. But I think it's good for people to know this, just like a contract. You don't need to have every paragraph of a contract, but you should have a general idea of what it's about. Well, I mean, that makes your listing presentation real. It is. It makes your price real. Yeah. So if you're a seller and if I sit down with you, uh, thank you. If I sit down with you, uh, and I'm going to tell you a price right then and there for one appointment. I'm there for an hour, you know, that's a lot to get done in an hour, right? You're building rapport, you're asking questions, you're going to recommend price, go through the contract. It's a lot to do. And a um, lot of leap of faith on their yeah. part that that number is accurate. Yeah. So it's a lot of commitment that I'm doing into appointments if it's worth it, right? At this point in my career, if it's something that I'm not going to do into appointments, I'm not going to appointments, right? But if it's one, if it's an expensive listing in the worth the time uh, then I certainly will yeah the way that you built your business and the, the connection that you have I actually find it interesting I think this is a, a strong touch point that in a world where everything becomes more automated and where we become less personal mm -hmm. do you feel the handwritten items on this put you in a better connection with that client yeah and it's no different than a handwritten note in some way sure you know you want to show technology and want to show some graphics and some pictures uh but i think something <laughs> this that you're actually you know this wasn't you plugged in numbers and it generated some automated figure for you mm -hmm. like showing this is this is my handwriting you know uh, this is I, I took time out of my day and i would sometimes tell people it takes me four hours which you know collectively it can for some people but uh it just shows that you care it, all right, this guy is this guy's earned a commission, or he's earned the chance to earn a commission. So, uh, just a, one quick question, just a curiosity. So, let's say your hot water heater is ten years old. Would yeah. you devalue that at fifty percent based on a twenty-year life? Yeah. Or how would you kind of come up with that? Yeah. So it's uh, the average life of a water heater is 10, 12 years, right? right. Sometimes fifteen. Uh, when it's a house led yesterday, it had a Montgomery Ward water heater. It's probably 30 years old, but yeah, so 10 to 12 years. And if it costs an average 1500 bucks for purchase plus install, uh, figure out what it would be per year. And if one's 10 years old and one's brand new, there's probably $800 adjustment, $1,000 adjustment. 
And if you're off, if you're off by a couple hundred bucks, it's the average. Yeah, right. So you're, so you're just prorating based on data. Yeah, okay. yeah, and that, those adjustments aren't significant. The biggest adjustments are going to be square footage, updates, lot size, curb appeal, stuff that we know it sells a house. And the small stuff is just collectively it shows. I mean, it shows that you care. I mean, I'm I'm doing down to fee simple ground rent, um, age of the home, which is all built in 1920. Uh, condition of paint inside outside and again this is all subjective to what I what I think it, the value is yeah so that being subjective you mentioned that if you get too granular that sometimes the clients push back that you just don't like my home yeah um how many listings are you going on using this on a regular basis okay so this year this year uh pending and close I've sold 140 uh, I'm about 50-50 between buyer and seller. A significant portion of my business is investment side. They don't need this, right? Sometimes, like, it takes me 10 minutes to, like, you know, do this. Sometimes I may not even see the house when it's listed. You know, hey, I've, I'll get pictures taken, what a lot box put on. I'll get the pictures back. I'll do an analysis. I want to see the house. So for the ones that I'm doing this for, and it's not this detailed, it's been a couple of years, two years since I've done one this detailed. Um, and the price point has to be worth it, right? So I would say it's it's few, it's few. But knowing this, and so what I do now is more of an email, right? So I'll highlight the comps, I'll put why I think that our value is X, uh, because a lot size square footage wise, you know, square footage different was maybe about a ten thousand dollar adjustment. Uh, this one has a two car attached garage versus our one car attached garage, it's maybe a five thousand dollar adjustment. You know, so I, I highlight things, um, but not down to like this detail, so just because of time. time. Yeah. But so with the volume that you're doing and you're sending this out, even via email, to save some time, mm -hmm. are you seeing a higher return on every time you send this out versus the times that you yeah. kind of yeah, go without doing it? Yeah, yeah. There's clients of mine and friends of mine where it's, you know, hey, here's the comps that I pulled. I think looking at these valuation, we should be here. Right, pricing it to sell is going to be here. If you do want to chase the market, which I wouldn't recommend in the city right now, you can price it here and just sort of know that you know we should watch the market. If it we're seeing a lot of traffic but no offers and no traffic, then we should probably adjust accordingly, just like we do for any other seller. Um, so, but yes, when I'm using this type, uh, it's selling, uh, but for for ones that I don't necessarily have to. It's, it's a shorter conversation, but I still am going to have my number from somewhere. I'm not just pulling out of thin air and saying, I'm going to just do it here because I'm lazy, because uh, I generally don't want to waste my time when I list the house. I'm not going to spend money trying to sell it. Uh, in, in the houses that we do list, I think the ratio that we sell it is about like 92%. So there's very few that actually come off the market that we're spending. You know, our average listing spends it's about 1500 bucks. Is our average cost, our cost between pictures, tour, sign install, flyers, and then overhead, right? Um, our, our listing manager, operations, I say, uh, and my mother in law, I pay to do my listing remarks because I, <laughs> I hate listing remarks. It's the worst for me. So my mother in law does it all for me. She loves it. Leverage, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so 30 minutes flies by. And yes. we could have conversations that go on for hours, but you've delivered some great nuggets for us to go through. And honestly, you're teaching a class on things, something that we would all love to hear more of. Um, so I'm going to ask you, would you mind coming back to teach with us and, and share more about how you go through your listing presentation? Because I think that's something we all want to really find out. What is the magic that you have when you go on that presentation? Yeah. Um, so we'll get a date that we'll schedule that to have you come back. But yeah, it's helpful for everyone, that, especially the CMA, yeah. and, and having a conversation around this, right? Because what I do is necessarily the correct way to do it, but just hearing other people's thoughts and how they do it and like challenging me on this, it'll be a collective, you know, I think, uh, conversation. Yeah. Well, Steve, I appreciate you being our rock star agent. I appreciate you being here in the Market Center. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for everyone for joining. Um, if you want to find out more, how can people reach out and contact you? Facebook. We out at 443-286-2943, steve at sphometeam.com, but uh, I'm, I'm nowhere to hide. I'm around. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining in. Thank you guys for attending. Steve, appreciate your time. See you guys next time. Yeah.